Hey everybody, um, as, as you've just read above, this topic is kind of unusual. Um, but it's not one of those topics that is uncommon. Uh, this took a lot of courage to do and, and to make. I, I don't want to go on too much about it because I'm limited. I'm just watching my time there. <laughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, this video is about um, my own near-death experience. Now, I've kept this secret for many, many years. Um, myself and Nigel spent um, maybe three hours discussing it last night because I even kept it secret from him. Um, it's something that happened to me when I was five years old. And um, it's very kind of tricky to get into the details of it because it was just so magnificent. Um, it's very hard to explain like without having someone here to you know to draw the pictures so that I can show you guys and I can't draw it so um, everything that you're about to hear is 100% true none of it has been exaggerated and I think that it was about time that I shared this experience with you guys um, this was not a dream this was not something that I saw on TV when I was five years old and you know, as the years go on, it kind of sticks in the head, and then you try to start make sense make sense out of it by making up some strange story. Um, everything you're about to hear is real, and I believe to be one hundred percent true. Um, here I go. When I was five years old, I was I was left with my grandfather to mind me while my mom went out to get food shopping. Um, I was very young at the time, five years old of course, and all the rest of oh, my sister, my younger, my younger sister was in hospital at the time. Um, and I can remember being left alone with my grandfather and like I said, my mom went off shopping and stuff. My gran I was sitting in my grandfather's living room on the chair. The, the, the legs were dangling <laughs> off the chair. And he told me to stay there. Stay there. He must go somewhere. I think he had to go to maybe to the bathroom. I was told, stay there. So he left the room and... Of course, I didn't stay where I was told to stay. There was a dresser um, on, in the corner of the room. And this dresser contained all sorts of stuff. There was a library of different kinds of things on top that I couldn't quite make out. But I knew that there was something there that I should go and investigate. So I dragged the chair over, hopped on top of the chair, and next thing I remember I was looking at all these different bottles of sweets, and there was booklets, there was um, a comb, there was all sorts of stuff. Now before I continue, lads, we all remember stuff, and we all remember stuff that goes back a long, long time ago. I have, I have an incredible memory. So, just in case you're wondering, how does he remember there was a comb there? I did. <laughs> and I do remember that. But anywho, um, I was looking at the bottles, and I was shaking them, and next thing I heard my grandfather coming down the stairs, so I dropped what I was doing, hopped off... I jumped off of the chair and I dragged the chair over to where it was and I sat back down again. But my grandfather didn't come in. So I listened at the door and I thought, okay, now is my chance to continue investigating. So I dragged the chair over again, jumped on top, and I was looking at all these bottles and things. And 
then I saw the drawer that was just underneath so I pulled open the drawer and I found a bottle inside there of Smarties so I listened to my grandfather again and I remember I shook the bottle and I looked up and I saw all of these Smarties in there so I just popped open the cover and I swallowed the entire bottle So, um, I was chewing as well. I remember I was chewing, chewing. So, I remember getting down again off of the chair. I dropped the bottle and I remember I went, <coughs> ugh. And I spat out the remainder of what was there. Now, I, I know I swallowed nearly all of the tablets but I did chew some of them as I was swallowing them and the next thing I knew I was in somebody's arms and that I, I it was like I'm um, holding someone underneath your arm you know and you're running with them so I just remembered it was bouncing up and down and I remember I saw the garden gate passing by. So I was in someone's arms like that. And I was bobbing up and down. And next thing I knew. There was a giant waterfall. Now I was in this place where that was so peaceful and... I know people say that when you have an in a near death experience that you can't feel wind and stuff like that but there was warmth there. There was people everywhere. You couldn't see their faces. You could only see the outline. It's very hard to explain now. This is where it gets tricky and I better hurry on because you know the time. But you could see the outline of people's faces but you couldn't see the faces themselves. Um, everything was, everybody was, it was like there was a glow about everyone. Um, they were wearing clothes, and but you could only see the outline of the clothes. Now this particular, the waterfall, I mean, it was so big that you couldn't see the top. And it was so wide that it, it stretched on for miles and miles and miles. You couldn't see where it began and where it started. The water was a very light blue colour, but you could see through it. And I remember I wasn't I, I was interested to see what was at the top. Now I wasn't walking I was floating. Um, it's so hard to explain really. Uh, this waterfall was just absolutely gigantic. Now if you think of Niagara Falls, it was Niagara Falls by multiplied by about 50,000 bazillion. Or I, I, it was so big that I, I can't explain but there was something at the top of the waterfall and there was people everywhere there was there there was um I don't remember seeing any babies there I don't remember seeing any children there but I do remember seeing just people I couldn't tell if there were men or women or anything but they 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 were a lot taller than than what you would expect a child or a baby to be but there was a singing kind of a thing as well and I know this is traditional for most people who who have had these um, NDEs or near death experiences but there was a singing coming from the top of the waterfall the top in which I could not see but there was a singing coming from there and I was very anxious to get <coughs> well to see what was at the top 
but I wasn't able to, to, to see it or to, to get to it, but I really, really wanted to go there. And I remember there was an, an incredible feeling of love and there was, it, like I wasn't frightened and I wasn't panicking or anything. It just felt right. And, you know, there was a wall as well. At the very end of, I could see the end, well, I could see the water come down, I could see the end of the the waterfall because it was right in front of me. But there was a wall and it wasn't very high. And it spread as, as far as you could imagine. And it was going, it was, it was, it was sort of like to stop people from jumping in. But it was it was it was pretty and you know and it just stretched right to the very end of it even though I couldn't see the end and it it was just there all the way across and I just remember I was completely and utterly kind of amazed by the size and the length of this gigantic waterfall um, even though I couldn't see the people's faces because they were like there was a bright light shining from all the faces you could see the outline the bright light was shining from their clothes but for some strange reason that didn't really it didn't it didn't shock me or bother me or anything you know the next thing I knew I was in the hospital it was like sw swish I was there then I wasn't. What happened was I swallowed a bottle of my grandfather's heart tablets. I had ingested quite a few of them. But I was... They shoved the pipe down my throat. And they sucked out everything that they could get. Somewhere along the line I died. But when my mother arrived at my grandfather's house and I wasn't there because I was rushed over to the hospital, um, one of the neighbours was made alert and held me underneath her arms and I was put into a car and, dr and driven over to the hospital. But whether I died or not was not told to my mom. My father was told all the details but he never told my mom but I leave it up to you to judge what went on when I was passing that garden gate something did happen and I stand by my word and I remember this as clear as the day it happened it's a very vivid very strong memory that has stuck with me since I was five years old I'm 33 years old now almost 33 years old and uh, we all forget stuff we forget dreams within a day or so this was not a dream and I firmly stand with my word that it was a true near-death experience and it's some and because of the people that sucked the tablets out of me um, and just the doctors and nurses and whatever the hell they did over there um, I was brought back. So I leave it up to you to decide. I've always wondered where where that place was, but anyway, well, by the way, I must add, there was no sky either. It was just bright, very, very bright. Anyway, that's my ne my near death experience, guys. And uh, I hope I don't lose all my subscribers and friends over this. But, you know, there you go. I love you all. Be good.